Welcome back to the channel everybody. We are going to continue our No Dust No Worries Hearthstone Rogue Ladder experiment. But we're going to start off actually, just as I logged in I saw that we had the Tavern Brawl available so I'm just going to queue up and get our free pack since this Tavern Brawl you don't have to win to get the pack you just have to play. So why not? But I, I will try to win obviously to see how it goes. Um, if you guys wanted to hear a little bit more about uh, this tavern brawl, I have a couple of videos out of my first impressions of the brawl. And since then I've learned a couple of new things. So I might talk over those here as well. Uh, okay, it looks like... Hmm, that doesn't look like we have anything to start off with. Okay. So it does appear that Mechazod is more random than I originally interpreted him to be. Uh, originally I, I assumed that he would assassinate any major threat, but sometimes he sort of just doesn't. And uh, we sort of saw that at the, um, during the Hearthstone World Championships, um, there was a show, quote unquote show match between Archon, Team Archon and Tempo Storm. Um, to see how quickly they could do the tavern brawl and it really seemed like one of the teams, I don't remember exactly which one, the one with the Mars and Firebat uh, they did it really really easily because Megazod sort of laid off and sort of just let them roll them, roll over him um, so there is a fair amount of RNG involved it seems like that the, it seems like the programming isn't as obvious as as you know he will just kill a high threat minion or etc etc so i encourage you to check out the link i'll put the check put the link in the show notes and uh hopefully you guys will have a look and see how pro players quote unquote pro players might approach this tavern brawl and the, the commentators have a couple of interesting things to say as well you know based on their experiences and so on and so forth um so yeah i'll put the link in the show notes so you guys can have a look and we are just going to sort of <clears throat> slowly work through this, you know, I'm not not too fussed about it. Um, but having seen having seen this format, uh, I'm really excited to see uh, what future Tavern Brawls might bring and also uh, which parts of... Do I want to heal? Yes. I can give him kings. Give him kings. Um, yeah, see what sort of new co-op missions might be coming up in future future adventures and 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 etc etc and so i'd love to hear what you guys think about the uh league of explorers expansion if you've guys if if you have if you've had a chance to check out the uh hearthstone no, sorry the card list um there's a load of there's a there's a card album the, the way i saw it was on the hearthstone facebook um so i'll put a link for that in the show notes as well album list and guys have a look i think there's about Feels like there's about 25 cards in there. I think that feels about right. There's usually about, is it five wings per adventure and five cards per wing plus some class cards. And I have noticed that there appear to be some cards missing or maybe that's just me. Hmm. Okay, I will heal this to keep it out of range of Megazod's attack. And we are doing okay, but we do need some combo pieces. The reason I save the refreshment is because I want to save it for his holy champion and uh, light warden buffs. Just using it for heal, I don't want to do that unless it's an emergency. So yeah, it's, it's, this 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 um, dancing swords is getting quite a bit of value, which is which I'm pretty happy with. But I appear to be running out of cards. Yeah, and I'd like to hear what you guys have been doing, how you guys have been doing with this uh, tavern brawl as well what uh, hmm. I will buff my own guy because we need the card draw from the dancing swords I was thinking about buffing the dancing swords with seal of champions and blessing of might but I need the cards so I think it might be worthwhile for him to trade in Oh, might have also been worthwhile thinking about refreshment vendoring there and slowing down the damage. Yeah. Oh well, no big deal. If we lose, we still get the pack, so... I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Whoops. That's okay. Sometimes these things happen. <clears throat> I am just glad to get the pack, so let's open the pack and see if we can actually make any changes to our deck. Let's let's go have a look. And I've been thinking maybe I will um, cash in that free arena run at some point because it's a pack, and I'm not really concerned about the gold, and I won't be spending. I won't be spending any extra gold on arena, but the f the, the initial one that's free, it, it's a free pack. So I probably will cash in the arena run, but I'd like to get, hear what you guys think. Maybe I should just start it and forfeit, or um, would you like to see me actually play it? Because I haven't actually done any arena based arena based um, content on this channel yet. So that's definitely something I would be looking into. Pyro is great and Dark Iron is great. So I might add those two in. Let's go have a look here. So it feels like we're doing a lot of housekeeping this episode. That's okay. I don't need, I could disenchant this, but let's just leave it, you know. It's the songs are part of uh, another part of the other free to play runs. For example, Trump's free to play runs. You know, he disenchants legendaries and and epics that aren't in his class. But as a as a new player, you're not going to do that. I mean, it feels really bad to do that because then you, you might want to feel like playing Paladin, and then you think, oh man, I got rid of the uh, I got rid of I got rid of lay on hands and I have to craft it again. Need another four hundred dust. It feels really bad when you do that. And it's not really an option for new players, I don't think. Okay, so I'm definitely putting the Dark Iron in, since this is a more, more of an early game deck. What do I get rid of it? Get, what do I get rid of for it? How much draw do I have? This is one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think I'll drop a Gnomish for a Dark Iron. And for the Pyro, I really like Pyro. Just seeing how many... Um, just seeing how many secrets paladins there are out there and also things like um unleash the hounds also things like implosion there are lots and lots of uh, one one health minions that you want to clear and with spells like backstab and deadly poison in my deck pyro can do a lot of work so i think i will drop one of the swamp oozes for a pyro we're quite lucky because the pyro is a rare that i can use so um our desk our deck cost will go up a fair amount um, I'd like to also trade out a Stormwind Champion for a Kraken. This thing is a little too... It's its fine, but it's too slow, and it doesn't help my class as half as much as it helps Shamans, Shaman, and Pallies. Okay, so uh, before we go ahead, I'm going to disappear back into the YouTube Vortex and update my deck list. I'll be right back. So I am back, and we have updated our deck lists please let me know if um there are any incorrect incorrect changes or i've miscalculated the dust i totally wouldn't part, put it past myself to do that um and just I, i'd like to get all the housekeeping out of the way i'm just going to hop into arena and see what classes are available yes 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 thank you very much free one um <clears throat> so i'd like to hear some feedback about which class i should pick uh, so we have warrior hunter and warlock I am very much swinging towards Hunter and Warlock. Um, Warrior has is problematic in Arena, and that's sort of reflected, actually. Blizzard sort of uh, uh, sort of acknowledged that with the uh, League of Explorers expansion. You, if you look through the cards, there are a number of common Warrior cards which are extremely powerful. Um, I don't know which I I I I don't exactly know exactly which cards, but if you look at them they'll just pop out to you like wow this is like a seven mana hogger and there's some sort of other ridiculous random cards so at the moment i'm swinging towards hunter and warlock but if i hear some backup if i hear some feedback from you guys you know i'm i'm more than happy to play any one of these i don't i, I fully don't expect to do very well with any one of these uh with my arena classes i tend to like to play rogue i always pick rogue if i can uh failing that you know um other classes with more impactful hero powers these three have very, very... Well, no, Warlock's hero power is great, and it's very uh, tempo-oriented. Hunter is, is is not too bad, but it's very straightforward, not very flexible. Warlock is very flexible. Warrior is very defensive, but doesn't do anything to the board. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a think about that. And I'll have a think about that uh, before my next video, and I'm, I'll probably do something on that um, just to help me get the pack. But before we go any further, let's get back into Rekt. All right. Hopefully we have a little bit more luck this time as opposed to last time where I basically lost a rank. Mm, I will keep the pack stab just in case there's a sorceress. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, do I want a one coin one? One coin one into weapon backstab. Okay, let's do it. Uh, this, this is not the fastest deck. This deck isn't the fastest, but um, I've got to take my advantages where I can get them. If my mulligan dictates that I do this, I'm bloody well doing this. And once again, having two of the one, one health minions on board is a great taxing it taxes his hero power. He can't ping them both, and if he pings one of them, he skips his turn too. So it's not too bad. Um, and and doing something like that against a hero power is really useful in the early game, because hero power actually really early, the hero power is usually worth about one to one and a half mana. And so therefore, um, he basically wastes a mana. Hero power is only great if you ha if you're floating the mana anyway. Therefore, hero power is good in the late game where you have a lot of mana sitting around you're not doing much with it and you might as well spend it but in the early game you really don't want to be hero powering if you don't if you if you don't have to um unless it's an emergency i don't think that was an emergency it leads me to believe believe that he doesn't have any two or three drop plays in his hand although it could just be um you know, a player attempting to get as much value as possible. Okay, ooh, Tempo Mage. I would have expected a Tempo Mage to start faster. This is going to be an issue. Not too much of an issue. We got bailed out there by the Deadly. And we have a pretty f pretty powerful 5, 6, 7 turn. So I'm, I'm looking... Uh, I'm looking pretty hopeful. I feel pretty hopeful about this game. Uh, I don't think Tempo Mages run poly, but if this is a low rank Tempo Mages doesn't have all the cards, there may very well be a poly in there, and um, may very well be a Flame Strike, which will be good against my Silver Hand, but not so good against my Ogres. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, do I want a pre-swing into the... No, I don't. I want to save my swing for later. Because if he, if he, if I pre-swing, he can just hit me again and then force me to trade one of my guys in. So I don't really want to do that. I want to see what he does with the Lotheb first. Okay, is there a fireball coming? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I probably will still uh, swing into the Lotheb since I won't have any weapons out anyway for a while. Does that make sense? To yeah, yep. So I will ogre swing into the Lotheb. Just to, just to protect my ogre, given that he spent a fireball on my silver hand knight, um, he's going to need another fireball or some sort of a flame lance to deal with ogre. And uh, next turn, I will ogre again. Yeah. So there's the sorcerer's apprentice. We didn't see that early game. Okay, that's a little bit wasteful because he's going to have to spend another. Okay. Yeah, that flame cannon. I don't know. I don't know about spending a flame cannon just to injure an ogre. You'd really have to actually take it down, in my opinion. Because I... Th okay. Okay. Hmm. I think I just play Stormwind. Have a really strong board. These two mirror entities are... Uh, these two mirror Im images are really annoying against my big minions. Uh, but luckily, I have a little bit of healing next turn, and I have uh, another ogre in hand. Hmm... If I were in his position, I would definitely go face. I would assume that the mirror images would be protecting me. Okay, what's what's this play? What is this play? Why would you go... Why would you just run... So he obviously wanted the secrets value. But why wouldn't you clear the entire ogre? It would behoove you to clear the entire ogre, I think, not just to leave it up. So I think he's probably... That's probably what he's going to do. Okay, fine, fine. Um, with his well, one of his minions and if he leaves it up that's going to be really surprising to me okay good 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 it's a really strange line of play okay here we go uh probably mirror entity on this which is fine and then i have my second ogre 
and next turn I can sap. I don't think I'll need to sap anything really. Um, but the tempo has been really strong there. The, the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice into double arcane intellect, double discounted arcane intellect, and the discounted mirror, ent mirror images, I always get that wrong, uh, is, is very powerful and really hard for me to deal with. But I do have a lot of value in the hand. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to sap the Mad Scientist. Yeah. I don't want that pulling out another secret just yet. Uh, and that Snow Chugger has done a lot of work, although I really haven't had any mana to weapon up. It's going to be an issue this turn because uh, I will want to weapon up and actually swing, but that's not going to be an option for me. Yeah, so I'm losing on card advantage. He's, he's five cards deeper into his deck than I am, and that's a problem. But you know, them's the breaks. So I'm going to clear this. I think we're done because... No, I could clear the shredder just to see what comes out. But I think we're still done. Yep, we're done. Yeah, that um, those two discounted arcane intellects really did a lot of work for him. But you know, that's okay. It happens. Off to a slower start than I would have liked, but... That's sort of what the ladder is like, you know. Sometimes you just run into things that are that are counter that will counter you and sometimes opponents will just have really fast starts that you can do nothing about and you know it's easy to get salty about it but it's just a game it's rng it's just as long as you stick to it um you know you will improve your play will improve your deck will improve it's slowly f slowly but surely this is going to be another problematic matchup because i don't have oh okay maybe not seeing that i don't want the fan or the shadow pan no nah, no shadow pan dies to execute the, the swamp is awesome to keep um i don't know if i will actually use it as tempo or save it for a weapon i think i'm gonna have to save it for a weapon in this matchup um against any other class such as a hunter i would use a swamp who just who's just for tempo and uh, what i mean by that is i'll probably coin it out on turn one just to challenge whatever the hunter plays um but against the warrior, warriors tend to play really slow. They don't get started until later. So it's not as important to have early game drops against the warrior because they're probably going to fire war exit anyway. So we will see what happens, what sort of warrior this is. At this sort of rank, you never know what sort of warrior this is. I'll save the coin. Coin gives me a lot of flexibility. And yeah, seeing the Stormwind Champion in my hand, it's just it just irks me. Um, I do really excellent um i do really want something stronger than that okay yep that's exactly why i have my backstab my friend and the next turn i will save he doesn't have any armor i'm not going to spend my uh, weapon charge to deal with deal with just deal damage to face you also have to remember that against warriors dealing damage to face enables battle rage battle rage is a card which um allows the warrior to draw to draw for each damaged character on his side. So if the Acolyte was damaged and he was damaged, he'd be able to draw two cards and it costs two mana. So sometimes it's better not to swing at his face in the early game or, or, or just, you know, if you can help it because one damage to face to enable a battle rage isn't that, isn't that good of a payoff for a rogue. Do I sap? Do I sap? Sap sets up uh, my future turns because if I sap now, I can coin uh, Shadow Pan next turn. Yeah, Sap is, Sap is worthwhile here. I really think he was setting that up for some sort of um, AoE play. And if he replays it, that's really good for me. Because it just means he skipped. He basically skipped turn 3. Um, okay, that's fine. I might even consider putting two Saps in this deck. Just 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 because just just of the amount of tempo that it generates. Okay, excellent. So we have been able to get off to a quick start. Next turn, I plan to Stormpike and then Ogre and then... Stormwind. So we have a strong uh, late game curve coming up. Okay, that's still fine. Uh, silence on this is not is not excellent because I still get to uh, take out his acolyte, and now I don't feel so bad for taking out his acolyte. Is he going to execute? Because if you're going to execute, that was a waste. Come on, man. Anyway, I shouldn't be too critical. You know, you're late. You're rank nineteen. That's that's just what happens. Um. I think I shoot the owl. I was
was going to use my face, I was going to use my dagger on the owl, but there's no reason to. Um, because what else would I shoot? Well, I shoot him in the face and enable Battle Rage, Battle Fury, whatever it's called. No, um, and this challenges the Acolyte anyway. And there's the War Axe, which is fine because I can because I can ooze it, although I don't think I will ooze it. Uh, given that he's spent an Execute already, my Boulder Fist has a higher chance of sticking to the board. And uh, given that he's spending his armor now, uh, it's, it's fairly unlikely that he'll be able to armor up um, into range to kill it, although he could uh, Shield Block armor up, gain seven armor, and then Shield Slam. Shield Block armor up is five mana. Yeah, he can definitely do it. Um, now I will... S yeah, now I will swing, because he's already in red health, so there's no harm in that, and the, my future turns, I'm likely going to have the spare mana, so I'm going to play 7, and then 8 is probably going to be weapon up this, or I'd just like to, well, this the, my, my general policy for late game rogue weapon holdage is um, one charge is fine. If you have two charges, it's a little bit of a waste. Um, just holding on to one charge and hold on to it as long as you need to. Okay, it's a very defensive warrior. Is there a second execute? Or is he going to send everything into it? Okay. You should always attack... Oh, is this a shield slam? That's really expensive removal. Come on, that's like two cards. Okay, sure, sure. Mm. Whatever you like, whatever you like. Mm. Oh, do I ooze? Do I ooze? Yes, I do. Ooze challenges. And I will clear the armor. The armor, um, that first shield slam indicates that the likelihood of having a second shield slam, um, which means I need to start dealing with the armor. And so, fairly likely to play, well, I have a number of plays. Okay, fine, that's fine. Death bite, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Two draw, that's fine. I'm tempted to play the Stormwind, actually, because it puts both of my minions out of range. Storming, running, hmm. I could fan, this is, this is a little, I could fan, run this in. Yeah, let's do that first. Okay, yep. Do I play this, or do I want to weapon up? Hmm. Running this in, I'm definitely running this in. Is there any point to healing it up to? No, there isn't. I think it's stronger to play the Squire attend me. Because his death spite will clear one of the big guys. He's most likely going to go here. Um, but it won't get any value. If I played the Voodoo Doctor, he would have gotten value. If I played um, basically anything else. Yeah, if I played the Voodoo Doctor and the Bone Guard, it wouldn't have got, would have gotten value. Is there a second Shield Slam? There is no second Shield Slam in your hand. That's fine. Oh, I forgot that he was, he was he held his charge. <coughs> Storm and chap. Yep. And gives us a really nice clear on. Um, if he wants to clear the storm and chap, he's going to have to send his weapon and the armor smith into it, or the second shield slam. And I'm sensing no second shield slam yet, but I could well be wrong. And the armor smith definitely enables a lot of things. Hmm. Yeah, it's really hard to tell with these, um, oh wow, nice, you have an Alex in your deck, which leads me to believe there's going to be a Grimash next turn. Okay, are you going face? He's going face, yeah, you're going face. I don't know why you're not saving that for Grimash. Perhaps he doesn't have a Grimash, or, I don't know, hard to say. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. So I can, I need to double clear. I don't really have any one damage. Double clear. I have to clear the Alex. Yeah, hit, hit. Hit, hit. I do want to, I think I want a weapon deadly. Weapon deadly is three, six, three, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah. Problematic matchup here, especially when the warrior has a number of really powerful cards, such as um, such as Alex. Uh, if he has a two-card combo, if he has the Grimash Cruel Task or Grimash in a Rage combo in his hand, I'm just done for. And uh, yeah, it's problematic. Mm. 
like I've said previously, control warriors have a really strong tempo. If you have things like shield slam, which are quite expensive to cast, executes so a very high tempo. Yeah, you have things like, uh, yeah, come on. Hey, if you've got a wallet warrior, you should be higher up on the rankings. Anyway, GG. Yeah, maybe people were just climbing, you know, people were just seeing uh, Hearthstone, the, the World Championships, and like, oh, let's climb the ladder. So I'm running into a load of strong Ned decks. Ah, them's the breaks. Okay, well, I'm just going to finish up the video here, and we'll pop, I'll pop right back in. I'm just going to break up the session here. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks in advance for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing all of those usual things that we do. Um, I do this for the love. So, you know, it'd be great. It means a lot to me, you know, when you guys show appreciation. And uh, I hope you guys have a lovely day. And I will see you guys next time. This is No Dust signing off.